Thanks, Alex, for doing this. Um, I, I want to catch up and ask, how has that tight end position progressed through camp for you guys? And outside of Jake and Zach, what's impressed you the most about some of the freshmen that you guys got on the staff? You, are you talking offensively as a whole? Yeah, offensively as a whole. Yeah, I think the the tight end position um, has come along. You know, we we put such a big emphasis on trying to get somebody ready behind Jake. Um, Jake has done a good job of, of trying to lead and, and learning how to lead and continuing to push forward both in, in our room and, and as, a, as a senior on the offense as well. Um, Zach has come along pretty well. You know, this offense is, is unique to where it, it takes a minute. Not having spring ball, I think, hurt Zach in a lot of ways. So he's had a lot of catch up to do. Um, you know, and then, and then getting the young guys ready between Tony Forrest and, and Alec Holler, uh, trying to make sure we could find uh, some balance there to where what happened a year ago where Jake went down and, and really felt like you didn't have somebody that could come in and step into that role. Uh, it's been a huge emphasis in, in our room. Offensively, um, you know, Stretch Creedle has, has really impressed for the young guys. Uh, he's He's – mature beyond his years in terms of from playing ability and learning the offense and learning the system and then actually being able to go in and, and play at a high level and compete and push push that veteran group. Um, Johnny Richardson has impressed. Um, Goody, uh, Demary's good is, you know, for a young back has really stepped into that role and, and has done a really, really good job. Um, the young lineman, you know, Matt Lee, um, still, you would say young, but has done an incredible job of stepping in and and has really been one of our best guys up there. Looks like a veteran and, and has practiced like a veteran and, and really sets a really physical tone up front for us. Um, you know, the other young O-linemen, Pat Barnett and, you know, Mike Lofton, those guys have really, really impressed. We've put a lot on their plate and they've taken it and ran with it. Um, Amari Johnson's another young guy that, that is really impressed early. Um, but we're really excited about the young guys. You know, the, the good thing is some of those guys are going to have to come in and help right away. Some we're preparing like they are, and we'll see where we are as we go. You know, we, we've, we've put a huge emphasis on building depth with all the uncertainty and unknowns that we're facing right now. Um, and we've prepared those guys like they got to go play, and we'll see what happens here. Luckily, we got just over two weeks before, before we have to actually go strap it on, and, and it matters. Coach, just specifically with about Zach uh, Marsh Wojan, what do you what do you see from him athletically? Because he's such an athletic kid, a three sport athlete in in high school. When he, when, you know, I know it's taken him some time to pick up the system, but when he's moving out there in practice, what do you see from him? Yeah, he's done a good job at the things he feels comfortable with. Um, you know, he he played receiver, um, really all the way up until a year ago at Sac City, where they asked him to to block a little bit more you know in this offense we're, we're we're putting a ton on him in the blocking side so I think he feels comfortable when he's out in space and, and running around and the ball's in the air I think that's his comfort zone we've tried to push him past that comfort zone and and you know the tight end in this offense such a pivotal part in, in the run game and the pass game in terms of being able to protect the quarterback at times and that's the part that that I think has been a huge emphasis to learn um, he is really athletic he feels comfortable with with the spatial stuff. It's been getting in the box and having somebody in your face right now. And and you practice against our defense, and they'll attack you a million different ways. And I think just being used to being in the box and bodies everywhere for him, being able to react quickly. And and uh, I think he would tell you it, there's there's a learning curve there. Um, we've put a lot on him and pushed him because um, I think he understands how pivotal his job is to for us to be successful on offense. Uh, Coach, we, we spoke to Coach Heupel on Tuesday, and he spoke a little, a little bit about Jake Hescock and just the strides he had made since last year. Can you kind of elaborate more on the progress he's making? Uh, Coach Heupel said, you know, you're going to do things with him that maybe you hadn't done with him before. Yeah, I think Jake, Jake, it took a minute for him to understand what he could be. You know, I, I think when, when I first got here, um, he was confident in, in certain parts of his game um, in terms of the run blocking part of it. Um, you know, I challenged him early that we're going to push you to be the best version of yourself and, and not limit you to maybe what you have done. Let, let's see what you can add to this offense uh, beyond what you have been doing in terms of your role. You know, the, I think that position is so unique because the more 
the more you can do at that spot, the more you can, you can be multiple offensively. And um, that's what I challenged him to do. That's what Coach Hype challenged him to do. Not having spring, um, we didn't allow to use as an excuse. I think that's a natural, op- you know, a natural opportunity to, to take the easy way out. We challenged him. I think he did a really, really good job with the time where he was between home and here, but, but training on his own. He took a lot of pride in developing and growing um, as a pass catcher, as a route runner. Um, and I think he came into camp really confident. He came, came in at almost 260 pounds and, and worked his tail off uh, in transforming his body. I think it was the first time in his career where it kind of clicked, like, this is it. This is my senior year. And, and he constantly challenges himself. I think that's where the growth has been to, to become the best version of himself. Um, and I think he's, he's confident now that he can go play and be an every down tight end. I, I don't know that he necessarily felt that after the season. Um, and, but I think in, in terms of being ready to play in two weeks, he's as close as I think he ever thought he would be. And to him, it's, it, it's to his credit, it's always been him challenging himself. And I don't know that he coming up, he'll admit he probably hasn't done a whole lot. Um, I think in the last six months, he's challenged himself and, and it's shown he, he's become physically stronger. He's become more intelligent within the game. Um, and I think he's become a really good leader in our room. Um, the constant challenge to him is to be a leader on the offense. And, and I think slowly but surely he's getting there. Alex, a guy like Jordan Davis, who uh, we know has been battling injuries through the, through the summer. Um, what, what have you seen from him a little bit about, about that? And what, what are your expectations for him of this upcoming season? Yeah, I think Jordan right now is still coming off of, off of the ACL. Uh, he's rehabbing like crazy. Um, I would be surprised if, if he was able to come back um, before the 2021 season. Coach, it may be kind of too early to answer this question, just with, you know, not having spring or just having a limited spring ball, you know, guys at home for a few months. What kind of quality changes do you think maybe we'll see when games get going? Do you think teams may not be in as good condition as they would have been otherwise? Do you, do you think we're going to see some sort of difference when the games get going? No, that's a fascinating question. Um, I think just like everybody else, I tuned in last Saturday in the, the Central Arkansas Austin P game to see that the answer to that. You know, I think I think this will be an ultimate challenge of of teams cultures and, and programs cultures in general. Um, in two ways. One, how much detail can you pour into into this limited offseason, you know, in into really a limited camp? Um, we're we're fortunate we don't play until the nineteenth. Uh, but I think it, it challenges the culture of your program first in what kind of detail can you pour into your into the the offensive defensive and special team schemes do you have to stay simpler or can you continue to push forward and and do the same thing that you you were able to do a year ago with a normal off season I think the programs whose cultures are are at a high level will will show up and the detail won't be noticed in terms of pre snap penalties and and you know, guys being in shape and, and the finer points that end up winning and losing games, um, third down red zone. Um, and I think it's to the, the second part of it in terms of challenging a team's culture is, is can guys stay healthy? Um, you know, can guys push through Knicks and, and continue to go and can guys continue to, to show up testing negative with, with this virus? I think those are both things that'll test your culture. Um, you know, our job as coaches and as leaders within the program is to continue to educate these guys, one, from a football side, two, from, from mitigating risk in terms of who you're around, when you're around them, uh, wearing face coverings, um, not doing maybe things on Saturday night that traditional college students do. And that's why I say it'll, it'll test your culture. We, we've challenged these guys on offense every single day that you are different you there there is something different for you on a Saturday night than than the average college student and um, knock on wood we've we've done a really good job with that and we'll continue to challenge them I I think these are still 18 to 22 year old young men that are in college at an incredible place to go to school Um, you you come outside and there's palm trees and and it the weather's incredible I think the natural urge for an 18 to 22 year old is to 
not go to your <laughs> go to your apartment and and watch TV on your own. But we've continued to challenge them, and and I think it'll be the ultimate sign of every program nationally. What is the culture of your program? Can your guys continue to behave accordingly? And we're at a different time in 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 society and with this virus. There's a lot of things going on that these guys have to deal with that probably in in my career guys have not had to deal with and and so we'll continue to challenge them and educate them i think the expectations within our walls are very similar to the expectations that that are out there that that you're going to come out and play incredible football week in week out so we'll continue to challenge them that the details right you know i, I think as you watch football last saturday it's it's the special teams it's, it's the pre-snap penalties those are all things that our guys need to continue to learn and push through so that on on the 19th, the, the football is as clean as it can imaginably be. I appreciate it. Thank you, Coach. Thank, Thank you. you, Coach. Thank you.